I'm sorry, but what the great good fuck was that? <laughs> no, really. What what was that? So as you guys can tell, I watched King Arthur Legend of the Sword, and I was actually really pumped for this movie. Charlie Hunnam, you know, magic and King Arthur stuff. Ah, that sounds like a recipe for awesome. And then I watched the movie. Now, I didn't ha walk out of this movie hating it, but I definitely felt really disappointed. And if anyone else is out there watching this and, and did enjoy the movie, that's totally fine. Um, no, no ill will against you, but me personally, I just walked out of there going, no. <laughs> yeah, because here's the thing, and this is what really killed it for me, was the editing. I feel like Guy Ritchie, and I really want to see like a director's cut of this movie, I really do. Because, um, I feel like this movie got, it's kind of, I feel, I have this weird feeling that this movie got daredeviled. And let me explain. If you guys remember the the theatrical cut of da of the uh, Daredevil film way back the Ben Affleck Daredevil film, and remember how bad the editing and chop how bad and choppy the editing was there, and then we saw the theatrical cut, and re I really enjoyed the theatrical cut a hell of a lot more, and I know a lot of other people did. So if this movie does well, I do want to see like a director's cut if there is one of this film, because a lot, there are some scenes missing. There's like, there's a grudge. I'm going to spoil some things in this movie, so if you don't want to, you know, see the full spoilers for this film, I would suggest you back, you hit the back button now or pause it, go see the, the movie and come back. Okay, I'm guessing if you're still here, you want to be spoiled or you've already seen the movie. So, this film pretty much, like I said, this movie does kind of have some heavily edited parts, uh, like, I feel like this movie got edited, like, there's a scene where they're trying to get Arthur to go to this island called the, what is it, the Dark Play, the Dark Islands, and it's supposed to really test him mentally and physically, and it, it's literally a montage of him just going through all this big character building moments, and it's supposed to be like a big moment for him, and it's just one big montage. Because, I, yeah, I feel like this movie was meant to be, like, three hours long, but then got edited. Also, I have this strange feeling that Guy, Re or Guy Ritchie really wants to do direct a He-Man movie, because this felt really a, a lot like He-Man. <laughs> no, really! And I know I'm, I'm, uh, the Jeremy Johns review kind of compared the same thing, and I watched the review before seeing this movie, and I was like, oh, there's no way this is going to be like, a, oh my god, it is like a He-Man movie. Um... I have, because yeah, I do have this weird feeling that he did want to, um, do a King, a, a He-Man and Masters of the Universe film, but, <laughs> yeah, he, he did a King Arthur instead, he did a King Arthur film instead, because you've got the legendary sword, you've even got Jude Law who turns into, like, a Skeletor-looking character, and... I'd have been, if, I, if, if this was a Guy Ritchie's He-Man movie, I think I would have walked out of this a little more happy. Also, speaking of Jude Law, man, does he take a bite of the cheese sandwich in this movie. Because he's really, like, I don't know if he's having fun or not, but he is clearly just eating all the cheese in the scene every time he's on, he's, he's on, on camera. Charlie Hunnam's pretty good. Um, I've really enjoyed his work from Sons of Anarchy, and he does a really good performance here. Um, I know I'm going to butcher his name. Uh, da Daimon Hunsu. He's really good in this film, but I feel like... The, the problem is I feel like a lot of actors were wasted in this film. Like, And I know I'm not, I can't remember the actors' names, but yeah, you had the actor who played Bruce Bolton and the actor who played Peter Baelish in this film, and they're fucking wasted. There's even a story arc with um, Littlefinger's uh, character between two other characters that he killed, and that again goes to the editing is like, okay, what was the whole, um, what was the whole thing with them? <laughs> um, what was the whole backstory between them? Because it looks like he was out to kill them, and he ruined this entire assassination plot to stop them. There is some generally funny moments in here. Um, and there's some nice action scenes, especially the fight between, um, the final fight between Jude Law and, and uh, um, Vortigan, that's the Jude Law's character's name, Vortigan and Arthur. But yeah, it do again, it still feels kind of choppy at points, and I feel like, um, I don't know who it was, but either the editor 
or Guy Ritchie, he really got edit, edit happy, or he really got camera happy with that film, because I was like, during their several fight scenes in here, I'm like, okay, just keep the camera focused, you don't need to do another God damn it. okay, <laughs> that's, that's a nice camera angle, just don't, oh, God damn it. Yeah. They also, like, they really wanted to make this a sequel. They really want to have a sequel in here because, you know, they mentioned Mordred, um, who in this con... If, if you guys remember original King Arthur lore, Mordred is the son of Arthur... is the bastard son of Arthur and his half-sister, uh, Morgan Le Fay. And I have a feeling if this movie does get a, a sequel, it will have Morgan Le Fay. They, they kind of hint at that maybe the mage that's working with him is Guinevere, Merlin's supposed to be in this. That Merlin is mentioned a lot in this film. Again, they're trying to really sequel bait this movie, aren't they? <laughs> um, but yeah, and it's really cool. I will say that the, that having the magic in this film is really cool. But again, they don't really go too deep in the magic because because there was like a war between mages and humans that was started by Vortigern and Mordred. But they don't go too deep into it nor do they talk about the semantics of the magic, because there are totally several points in this film before the climax where I looked at the mage, who was not the not Guinevere character. I looked at her at, at some points and went, wow, you could have been a bigger help there. <laughs> they don't go into the... F there's also, like, again, there's a great scene of just showing these giant el war elephants, and it kind of tells you, yeah, this is the kind of movie you came into. Um, but god, the editing in this film is just, that's what's killing it for me. And I feel like some of the actors, like, again, a lot of the actors felt wasted in here. Um, the actress who played, um, the mage, wow, we get no backstory with her of why she was trying to protect Arthur. They kind of hint at, again, that's a lot of, it does a lot of, like, hints and name drops here and there. And there are just some things in here that just make no goddamn sense. Like, for some reason... Vortigan is working alongside three sirens who are really like, they look like Ursula from Little Mermaid, I swear to God. One of them actually does remind me. Like, the moment one of them popped out of the water, um, and their whole thing is that they give him all this, like, Skeletor power, I'm just gonna call him, Ske when he, go he goes, he gets a Skeletor form, and they, he, what he has to do in exchange is he has to kill his wife and daughter every time he kill, you know, he gets to gain that power from them. And it makes me go, all right, how did you meet them? And it's also, under, the meeting place was under the castle, so how did Uther, your brother, not notice this shit? Also, how did you keep this a secret from your, from your wife? And why does it have to be a loved one to get that kind of power? And they don't, they don't fucking explain a thing! That's the other major thing. And also, the moment I saw one of the sirens, the first, I'm gonna call them sirens, because I guess that's what they are or the fates, or something like that, because they're not the lady in the water, because we do see the lady in the water. I mean the lady of the lake, excuse me, the lady of the lake. We see her in here, and she's... Uh, well, to be fair, she's always been plot convenience, so I'm going to take that one back. But yeah, the three, it, the moment they came, it, when the first one came out of the water, I literally went, Ursula? And it's not because she was fat and ugly or anything, it's because... Yeah, well, she looked almost exactly like if they were going to do a live action, um, a live action Little Mermaid, the, the word escaped me, oh my god, they were going to do, which I know they're doing a live action Little Mermaid, I kind of pictured in my head, well, there, well, that's what Ursula would look like, <laughs> right there, and I'm, and the moment she, they came out of the water, there's three of them, and they don't explain how did, you know, Vortigan meet them, you know, something, just something. And again, they don't go into the backstory of, you know, um, everything that, there are certain, like, plot points, like, again, why does the, you know, why was the mage sent, and where's Merlin? You know, Mer they don't, you know, they could have just said Merlin lost, like, Mordred betrayed Merlin, or something like that. All they said was, oh, he crafted the sword, and then he went away. Yeah. And it, but yeah, hopefully, I would be interested to give this movie another watch if we got it like a director's cut, but as it stands, the editing, the waste of actors, and it feels like, yeah, the actress who played the, the maid, the main mage, man, <laughs> there is, emote here, lady, emote. <laughs> anyway. 
Um, yeah, so, again, if you enjoyed this film, that's totally fine. No ill will against you. This is just, just my personal opinion. And, I, again, I was really excited for this film, but, man, was the payoff... I didn't hate this film. That's the other thing. I didn't, like, walk out of there going, I hate this. I was just kind of like, man, that was just not great. And, again, there this could have been a good film, and I would love to give this another watch if this got a director's cut. Also, I will give it this. There's some... this. I want to get the soundtrack for this movie, because... There's actually some pretty badass, like, Nordic, um, ye old music in here, and I'm a big fan of that, so I would be willing to, yeah, if, if anything, that's kind of a pretty badass soundtrack you got there. But anyway, so you guys tell me in the comments below, what did you guys think of King Arthur Legend of the so Sword? Did you guys like it? Did you guys hate it? Just comment below, let me know, and once again, I hope you all enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys later.